Hello, welcome to Beyond the Filter. I am here. My name is Liz Ryerson. I am here with the one, the only, uh, Doc Future, aka uh, what Topher Florence, aka Doc Future. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, so I'm a big fan of your videos. Uh, I got introduced to them. I think from well, your poster, you posted or you maybe still post on Select Button, correct? Right, I think we have some friends in common there. So yeah, Select Button is like a video game, uh, weird video game forum, uh, video game hipster forum. I don't know how to describe it. Sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I was on it very briefly, but uh, you were also on something awful, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And and you make a lot of videos. Uh, some people might have seen some of them. I, I know a lot of people were posting the. Uh, uh, Funky Kong, uh, <laughs> relaxing Funky Kong, asthma video. Right. Uh, gives you a ride back from the airport. Um, my biggest, my biggest inspiration, which I was actually going to play. Um, I did like a talk at Indicade East, and like at the beginning, just as a non sequitur, I was going to play like the intro to one of your sonic 2 special edition let's play videos like mm -hmm. where it like zooms out of the universe and then like zooms in on like knuckles or something like that <laughs> and then i was just gonna stop it there and not <laughs> not give any context but the video codec didn't work with like <laughs> the laptop they made me use so. oh that's a shame <laughs> yeah i was really sad about that uh, but yeah, no, I think there's a lot of like uh, artistry to your videos, and that's why I wanted to have you on. I wanted to ask you about it. So um, I guess I wanted to ask you first, like, um, what, where you, uh, like, where did you get your start? Uh, like, what communities online did you join? Um, and what were your, like, inspirations um, on some of these videos? Sure. I mean, I think the, the first couple of videos that are on my, my Doc Future account on YouTube came out of uh, Something Awful Forums even before the Let's Plays. Uh, the first couple of those are, are like, uh, they, were, they made threads where there were video contests where you just say, okay, you make a video where you talk in Batman's voice here or make a video where there's just ill-fitting music. And I was like, well, I, you know, I, I didn't really edit the video then and I just kind of... So, well, I can teach myself Premiere by learning how to do this kind of stuff, you know. So, I kind of dove in, and those were some, they got a good reaction, so I kind of, you know, I'm kind of narcissistic, so you get it. <laughs> 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 kind of like the attention, so you keep, you know, doing the same kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I think we all are at some level. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Especially anyone who makes quote-unquote content online. Right, right. <laughs> um, but, so that's interesting, like, the uh, dynamic of those uh, something awful like specifically about like i i've heard that there's like I, I i never participated in something awful i wasn't one of the mm -hmm. cool kids um but it feels like uh there is kind of a a lot of like that sort of like weird twitter and that kind of stuff came from there and there's that kind of like interest in the more kind of strange and surreal and um odd experience online um right i you know i think this this kind of the the kind of humor that you see even on tv today is kind of filtered down let's say from things like maybe mystery science theater or space goes coast to coast and kids who grew up watching those maybe they you know things like something awful or 4chan or new grounds in the early days of the internet that's kind of places where they post and you know that kind of got all stuck inside of us. I, I think there's maybe even something to the idea that people my age, like I'm I'm 34, so I grew up with Saturday morning cartoons that were already sort of uh, metafictional, let's say. <laughs> they were already talking about, you know, breaking the fourth wall constantly and uh, talking about seasons and stories and episodes within them. So maybe our brains never had a chance to just be normal <laughs> in the first place, you know? Yeah, I don't think there is any real normal with this stuff. Sure. I mean, like, yeah, it it is weird for me to think about um, kids growing up, and we were talking about it right before I started recording, uh, mm -hmm. kids growing up with, like, uh, YouTubers now who talk about, like, classic gaming or whatever, and kids who get into, like, 
you know, Nintendo and Atari and that stuff. Yeah. Uh, just based on that, it's really weird for me to think about like how like YouTube personalities are have become their like Saturday morning cartoons in a weird way. <laughs> That is kind of weird. It's like there, there used to be maybe a guy at the record store who'd recommend you something or something like that, you know. But now, with everything kind of open, it's got you know, it's got good and bad sides. But yeah, I, I think about that in terms of like uh, one of my biggest. I mean, it, it's weird to think about how much uh, I like. I went back and watched through The Simpsons recently, like up to season the end of season eight. Because mm -hmm. that's that's like <laughs> that's generally the agreed upon point where like right after that is where The Simpsons starts to get bad. <laughs> um, right. I mean, like I independently reached that conclusion when I was a kid. Like I felt like something was really off um, around that point. But like I grew up with that, and there there's so much like non sequiturs and like a lot of very strange, a lot of references to things that I had no idea about. Like. Mm -hmm. um, but and and I was been listening to this podcast. Uh, th this guy Bob Mackey, who I know of because uh, I knew him in the Bay Area. But um, he does a podcast. He he also does a podcast called Retronauts. But he he does a podcast mm -hmm. uh, called Talking Simpsons, where they talk about like each episode of The Simpsons, um, and like sequentially. And it's been really interesting to listen to, just like to get a sense of like. One, like, all the references to pop culture and stuff, like, context behind them that I had no idea about. But two, like, just talking about how people talking about how their sense of humor and, like, their sense of reality developed around this, like, TV, this programming, <laughs> this, like, very surreal stuff. I think there's definitely something to that. Because when you think about these, the, the way... There, right now on YouTube, in fact, there's like official annotated mystery science theater. So it's, it's kind of like these old uh, VH1 pop-up videos where every time they make a reference, they'll actually put it on screen. So you can kind of get a little taste of what they actually mean. I think there's something when you're a kid, you hear people making references. You just think it's kind of funny, even without just in an abstract way. Yeah. Even without truly understanding the references. <laughs> you just hear a funny old name and it's just Fatty McGee and you're like, oh, that's funny. <laughs> And that, 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 is, that, that is kind of how my videos work, right? Like, uh, I'm not some person who's above nostalgia, but it's like, it's, what's in there is a lot of obscure clips, a lot of strange references to things that I don't really list out on there. So the, the part of the effect of my videos is just you're seeing something that's like, what, what could this even be? Where is this from? You know, and that's, that's part of the effect that I'm going for sometimes. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, uh, I, another big inspiration for me, I think, growing up that I don't recognize but have internalized was, like, uh, that show Rocco's Modern Life on, <laughs> on Nickelodeon, which is, like, very strange and very surreal. Um, yeah. And I think I grew up, like, uh, listening to stuff that, in, in retrospect, was very strange. Like, I was listening to, um, like, musically, I think it's the biggest thing. For me, I was listening to um, uh, one of the early, like, Beck albums the other day. Mm -hmm. uh, and, like, there's just, like, so many bizarre non sequiturs and things like that. There's, like, like country and folk music in there, but there's also, like, weird hip-hop references. But, and there's also, like, just strange non sequitur, like, avant-garde performance art kind of stuff and, like, mm -hmm. random sampling and like you know, I guess if I, if I went back with no context, I'd be kind of like like oh lol, this is so random, you know, like kind of I yeah. I, I don't necessarily view it the same way now, but it's weird because that was my sense of what was normal. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, go ahead. well yeah, but like that that kind of reflected in when I started making music, I was like okay, yeah, I'm gonna make music based on this because like for me, what was normal was like that or like you know, like Radiohead or something like that. Like, mm -hmm. and I just didn't really, wasn't really affected by maybe some of the more mainstream pop culture. So like, I always just felt like it, it was weird. Cause I, um, I was like, why, why am I so different? And I, I think it's like, because, like, that stuff affects you so much and you don't even realize it. Like when you internalize stuff early on, like, um, 
that that says a lot about the way that you like are going to like process the world and deal with like things that you make. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think part of it, like, it relates to maybe turntablism and DJ stuff, you know, you'd always hear, where's this weird sample from? Where's this guy just from the fifties talking? Where is that from? <laughs> you know, just random things like that. And there's, there's kind of a fine line when you're trying to make something that's actually funny. And, you know, me talking about all this is just, you know, making it not funny. So <laughs> I'll get that out of the way anyway. But, but when you're trying to make something funny, the, that thin kind of line between this is just uh, completely random nonsense and there's there's a little bit of logic to this and just enough logic so it's actually funny or entertaining in some way or addictive or, you know, in, in whatever you're trying to do in that way. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of your humor specifically relies on just being mysterious. Mm-hmm. Like, I'd agree. Yeah, like the... Um... The video that you have up as your uh, like uh, autoplay video on your channel, that Sonic 2 video that's like uh, one hour long and <laughs> like Sonic DJ, but then has this like, is that is that music from um, what's that game called? That Sonic uh, uh, DS game. Yeah. So th that video, let, let, for that one specifically, let's just to ruin the mystery. Okay. That's just. That is from that yeah the the dancing itself is from a Sonic game is from a what was what the most recent with so Sonic Boom for oh, DS oh Sonic like Boom yeah and then the music is from Sonic Chronicles DS and there's lot throughout the, the the clip there's lots of sprinkled in like things that were left in Sonic games like in in Sonic 06 the notoriously bad you know worst Sonic game supposedly. They 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 actually leave in voice takes that work, didn't go correctly. Oh. So some of that is mixed in there, and it's just it's just kind of a a, a sloppy mess of of things that are silly about Sonic games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's weird, like uh, how Sonic has become this weird like meme, uh, and like it's it's kind of associated with this like. Uh, no, like there's just like it's just like trashy or something. Yeah, it almost just doesn't. There's so, there's certain icons, things that become iconic like maybe SpongeBob or Sonic or things like that, that kind of just go beyond all or whatever original meaning they may have had, and just become complete ciphers for just either nonsense or just universal emotion or whatever you know. Just memes kind of just flatten everything out to a degree. <laughs> But in it's, a weird way. it's always like a take on pop culture in a way that is making it more either like surreal or disturbing. Like I've noticed that uh, mm -hmm. with SpongeBob, it's it's like it, Patrick suicide. He commits suicide in this episode. I think that's like one. There's like a meme or like a video about that. It's like or no no Squidward suicide. That's what it is. Mm. Uh, and like Sonic, it's like weird surreal creepiness a lot of the time yeah i could see that i mean i also see a lot of spongebob stuff you know twitter or instagram or things like that people just kind of like oh yeah this is how i feel when this happens you know and it's just you know th well, that's just in general for every kind of thing i guess but oh yeah i noticed that with the youtube poops too like mm -hmm. um like like you know hank hill has hidden anger issues <laughs> or like uh there's that that Simpsons wave stuff that that was like a really brief thing. Did you yeah. you you heard about that, right? Mhm. Mm I've seen some of that. It's pretty <laughs> it's, it's pretty good. Yeah, there was like one video where like supposedly like the narrative of that was edited together was that Ned Flanders killed Bart. Mm. And they were like using all the clips to like build that narrative. It was actually pretty clever. That kind of stuff, the Simpsons wave stuff, especially reminds me of on the old internet that site, uh, "You're the Man Now, Dog." Yeah, and that kind of just you see a, a picture or an animated GIF, and it's just repetitive over and over again. The stuff kind of actually presaged Vine in a way, I guess, yeah. because of just just loops over and over again of the same kind of weird content and things like that. You're right that Vine has sort of replaced that. It's we it's weird though because uh these things have become like there were things that were like kind of 
internet within the internet sort of memes like like you're the man that now dog sort of became popular but it was within like internet forum communities and stuff yeah. like that whereas vine is used by everyone well not right. everyone but you know like a much wider user base right there there wouldn't be the the stuff back then like mr t ate my balls or whatever <laughs> from the old internet those those sort of proto memes work in a, in a slightly different way than things to now i think yeah i guess your your stuff definitely seems more part of that community uh in some ways in that um mm -hmm. a lot of it is specifically references to pop culture and like old cartoons and stuff like that um whereas it feels like i mean that stuff still happens today but uh in in the more like mainstream sphere it, there's like a little bit less of that stuff going on i feel like yeah, I'd, I'd say my stuff is has a zeros sensibility, if that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> what, what what is zeros? Like the 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 aughts. Oh, oh okay, yeah. The two thousands. Yeah, well, and uh, Ed, I don't know. I was talking to uh, uh, Nat Natalie Lawhead, who uh, makes uh, this thing called Tetragedon Games. Um, mm -hmm. That is, uh, if you haven't played it, I definitely recommend it. It's free. Um, Tetragedon dot com, but it's like uh, all flash games based around just this idea of like the bizarre and irritatingness of like internet memes and internet culture um yeah and there's a lot of like uh strange like she makes it in flash and there's a lot of really strange interactions and stuff like that um between you know it loads in a web browser but there are a lot of video clips and there's a lot of like you know, random click on something and it does something unexpected and takes you to a portal completely somewhere else that's completely unrelated to whatever is the game is supposed to actually be. Uh, but what the game is supposed to actually be is pretty loose. Like, uh, that reminds me more of that sort of sensibility and, and the sensibility in your videos that, like, you, you kind of don't know what to expect and what happens when you click on something. There's that le level of, like, total mystery there. Um, and I feel like that is being lost with a lot of stuff like mm. these days. And I, I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on that? I think maybe, maybe there's sort of a, it's maybe more today. It's more like you're trying to pitch for a sketch comedy show or something like that. Yeah. People are making videos. It's a little bit more polished, a little bit more straightforward. I mean, this, the, when I try to make something, I try to, I, I, I mean, I don't have, like a, a grand vision or anything for my videos. I, I usually try to make something that's funny to me. It's not like I'm making money off of this. I, I can't because half of the stuff is copyrighted and it's on YouTube. So, you yeah. know, <laughs> yeah. I'm worried about it getting taken down in the first place than worried about making money from that stuff. So, but yeah, I, I definitely think that the stuff I make, I, I sometimes I try to, I just, the, the effect I want to do is cause anxiety <laughs> or I mean, I'll make you, I know something like a, my Goslin video for the, the Kingdom Hearts thing. The, what I want to do is just say, okay, what what if this was a real video? Because the way people browse, the or the Funky Kong video, the same thing. Mm -hmm. The way people browse the internet, they kind of just, they don't even look at the channel it comes from. They'll just look at one video and pass it around and, you know, and, and say, can you believe this? This is this real? This person does this? And, you know, I, I kind of like an internet where you can't exactly trust everything. Yeah. I kind of enjoy that, that level of kind of, I don't know, but I, and with those, I try to make them so they're not like, you know, super mean spirited or anything. I, I, I more want people when they see them to just think that, you know, the, the person who's making this is, is, should not exist. <laughs> yeah. No, I definitely, that, that's what I like about your videos is there's a lot of like online meme stuff or there's a lot of that stuff that's just trying to like troll people in a really obvious way. Yeah. And that stuff never really responded to me as much as like, yeah, you click on one of your videos and it's like, what, w wait, what, what is this? Like, what's going on right now? Uh, and like you've seen enough of them, then you start to like you know sense the patterns and all the, the like references to other videos. Like sure. you have like so many references to Friends. <laughs> I I still to this day I show people that uh, the the uh, uh, semi alphabetical list of black <laughs> actors and Friends. That's one of my favorite videos of yours. 
That's a lot of fun. Yeah. I, I think when that's part of the reason why I don't like to repeat myself a lot. I mean, I, I probably will make some like sequels to my videos here and there, but, um, cause it's more interesting when you just kind of, it's just kind of a mystery box. You're just kind of looking in there. It's what's, what's next. You know, I have to think about it like that when people who are subscribed to me and it feels like, you know, I feel lucky that I can just put something up and, you know, think to myself, okay, at least 2000 people will definitely see this. Yeah. You know, and pass it around. So if I have the space to do whatever I want, then I don't want to get people the same thing all the time, or I don't want to get it too, you know, tired. I mean, I, I'd have a lot more stress if, if I was doing this, like a Patreon or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah you know. That's, um, <laughs> as, somebody, that, that would, as somebody who has a Patreon, I, yeah. I definitely agree with that. <laughs> that would cause me a lot more stress and, and anxiety trying to worry about what, what, what exactly does my audience want and what do they need here and what do they, you know. But th when I do it the way I do it, which is, you know, at this point, I, I kind of barely ever make a video, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 and it's more, that's more just down to personal life stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I just just not having the time or the space to, to make it. Or the energy at certain times, you know. Yeah. But, you know, I, I like it when I do have the motivation to make videos. I can just either crank them out or just put them up when I want. And I don't really owe people things for it, you know. Mm. It's, 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 it's much easier to do this kind of weird thing as a hobby yeah. than trying to do it as a job. Yeah, I've definitely noticed that. With I, I feel like I made my best art before I had Patreon. But mm -hmm. I'm kind of like trying to balance and, you know, do what I can for Patreon yeah. while still... I'm trying to like, I don't know, maybe I just need to make it more explicit. This is something I've been struggling a lot with. Uh, uh, I guess I maybe I should make it more explicit like... This thing is for Patreon, and this thing is not. But, you know, I, I make it intentionally vague, which makes it hard, because I start to think about, oh, everyone wants me to... Everyone, like, wants me to write about this current game and have a certain kind of take on it. Or, you know, everyone wants me to make a certain kind of video, you know, based on something that I might have done in the past. And that can be... That's, like, really exhausting. Um... And I don't know, I, I think about, like, the mental health of, like, a lot of YouTubers, especially, like, Let's Players or, uh, you know, people who do, like, game reviews kind of stuff. Like, a lot of those people have a lot, like, they do that as a living. Um, and it's just a constant stress because you're always, like, beholden to your viewers and, like, people's it, being interested in you and, right. you know, yeah, yeah. That's, that's hard. And that's the thing that, like, uh, we miss with like I don't know the thing that I also like about your videos and this is just like kind of a weird like not something that you can really control but the fact that when you click on one of your videos your videos have a decent number of views to them so um, mm -hmm. like if you're just somebody who's clicking around uh, you see that that has a reasonable number of views so you're more likely to think that that thing is what is described in the title yeah yeah and I, I think that that's just really when I think about people's mental health and stuff like that on YouTube or like the try everybody just trying to squeeze just a little bit of a drop of water from the stone of all this social media stuff just to you know survive it's really really exhausting but yeah I mean I and you know I'm I'm going to do it I'm gonna get on I'm gonna get on Patreon mm -hmm. but I, I'm I'm gonna have to do something I'm gonna have to say okay I'm gonna make this kind of video start another channel and say, okay, I, this is something that I can not, not, not factory crank out, but something that I can reliably do mm -hmm. over and over again. The kind of videos that I make, I cannot, you know, reproduce constantly. <laughs> yeah. If, 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 if I could make videos like my Sonic one video where I'm just this stream of consciousness talking over a game mm -hmm. over and over again with the, reliably with the level of quality that I can be satisfied with, I would, but it's not, you know, yeah. It, it's, the stuff I do is kind of too specific, I guess, is, is in a weird way. Yeah, that is, I don't know, it's it's weird to think about. Um, I'm like, uh, I had a, um, so going back a little bit, I had a, um, I think like, so Let's Plays have been around for a while since like, I, mm. don't, I don't know exactly how long, since I guess video was 
easy to started to become easier to post on the internet like yeah um but um and even before that there were screenshot let's plays yeah that's true There's people that's doing true. pictures and walkthroughs and things like that you know yeah like the let's play archive which is uh basically a branch or originally orig originated from something awful right yeah and that was like earlier let's play a lot of those are screenshots and commentary and there's a really and you can still find those to some extent like if you search on game forums and things like that but they're more of a niche thing i guess mm -hmm. um but um i had a i think i I, I kind of dismissed the stuff because I just felt like, oh, it's just people playing through games and funny voices or whatever. Because I guess even back then that, that whole trend had sort of started. Um, but I had a friend who was like, oh, no, you should, like, uh, you should, like, watch these really surreal Let's Plays. And he introduced me <laughs> to um, this Something Awful Let's Play of Sonic 2006, um, which I think oh, is yeah. on YouTube now. But... Um, it was uh, Pokey Captain and Kung Fu Jesus and right. Medibot. I think Medibot is my favorite part of that video. <laughs> um, but it's like, it's them playing through Sonic 2006, but it's them playing through it consecutively. Like, they didn't take any breaks. Like, they recorded the whole thing in a weekend. And uh, they had, like, they had like things like they announced like trivia and rewards and they like read through reviews of it and they talked about there was a lot of stuff going on during the 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 video and like and and then also like you know like just stuff going on in their life happening it too like at one point they like order chinese food and talk about like the chinese food that they order <laughs> and like and like are eating it while they're doing it i don't know there's that kind of like weird documentary sense of capturing a moment plus like there's very kind of surreal commentary plus you get the sense of like what the game is and, and like this isn't like the most amazing thing ever but like when i discovered it like i was like really fascinated by it i like watched it like um i just like i watched the, i watched it through the whole thing like yeah and it's like 30 hours long <laughs> and th that was all you know pre-twitch and everything else and you know people now they're kind of used to that but for something back then for them to kind of just go in there and it does. It feels nice when you're watching. You can feel somebody else's humanity, kind of, you know, coming off the video. Yeah, because because Twitch, you have like people who make their livelihood off of it. So they're sitting and they have the cam of their face, and you see their like reaction or whatever. And it's just them in a room. Like it isn't really. You don't really get that sense of. Or in even when you see like like game grumps or something like that, like uh, groups of people playing through games, it's obvious that they're trying to provide. It's almost like, like you said, that sketch comedy thing. Like they're trying to provide humor, and it's kind of forced in a way. Like sometimes. Sure, you know, there's there's that there's sort of I think with dudes there is a drive within them when they when they see something stupid they got to make either you know oh I got to make the dirtiest joke about this I got to <laughs> yeah I got to make the say the stupidest most obvious thing about this you know instantly and it's kind of you know when you when we're kind of people are having their adolescences played out large you know being recorded for hours and hours on end and that you know, it's, it's kind of a weird thing i'm very glad that i grew up when i did without <laughs> without being able to constantly upload video of myself you know i'm, I'm already i already have enough anxiety with the things i posted say eight years ago you know <laughs> yeah. i don't want to think what i would have posted if, if youtube existed when i was 15 you know that would have yeah. been something crazy so I, I still have anxiety about my oc remix stuff and i did that when i was mm. like started doing that when i was 15 um, <laughs> i was on this website called oc remix did you yeah 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 um, I, I i almost posted one i'll put it that way <laughs> that i were... posted a, a a spin yard zone remix people liked it and then i forgot it existed <laughs> like oc remix was so it was pr pretty darn clickish, and like there, once they had the quality standards, like it started to become a really weird space. But anyway, I'm actually gonna do a whole episode about that with one of my friends from that community. Um, so I'm excited about that. Um, <laughs> I may or may not post that one before this one. I'm not sure, but yeah, I was like, I I have a, a friend who uh, who's been in part of that community a really long time, and she also her. Her boyfriend has like was like a huge member of that community, so we we have a lot of stories about that stuff. There, yeah, there are things about that, like you said. That you, you, I, I notice on OC Remix myself as someone used to listen to it. Okay, oh, suddenly 
this many songs have improvisation for a very long time. This many have an electric guitar suddenly. This, you know, it's kind of patterns you can sense in there. Yeah, and it's very specific to the community, um, but like, and their quality standards. After a certain point, you couldn't just do straight up remix of something or mm -hmm. rearrangement. You had to add stuff to it. But the way that people added stuff to it was kind of strange, a lot of the time. And given it's how I started learning how to make music. It it kind of gave me some weird uh, ideas about what that was, what you were actually supposed to do that I've had to shed now. <laughs> but you know, so does going to music school. So so it's, sure. it's you know it's it's apples and oranges. Um, but yeah, no, the finishing the let's play thing. Like uh, after a while, I discovered your Sonic One Easy Mode Let's Play and the um the Sonic 2 Special Edition, which is m probably my favorite thing that you've done because mm -hmm. it's it's a Let's Play of a... I, I'm just going to explain it, if that's okay. It's, sure. It's fairly old at this point, so I figure it's okay to ruin the joke. Yeah, it's okay. Um, but it's a Let's Play of a bonus, quote-unquote bonus edition of Sonic 2 that uh, your uncle, who works for Sega, supposedly had, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Sega. It changes every video, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny. There's a game that called The Uncle Who Works for Nintendo now. I don't know if you've ever heard of that game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, it, it basically, it's like you're you're playing with all this trivia and all this, like, game commercials and sort of game press, like, magazine kind of cliché things that were happening around the time and referencing that information, but in a way that is just totally, like not true at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. But the thing that I really like about it is it gradually, it has a progression. Like, it gradually gets <laughs> more and more surreal as it goes on. And I do like that. You know, th th for that video, when when, you, when I grew up and Sonic 2 came out, the, and this was, you know, there were BBSs, there was Prodigy, stuff like that, but, you know, there wasn't game facts like it existed today or things like that. And Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is really one of the weirdest games for secrets to have in it. It's it got all these weird debug modes. You can put two tails on the screen. You get it, And there's so many rumors behind it, you know, and it, 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 those old, you know, playground rumors you guys have things like, you know, all the weird stuff you could do in Mortal Kombat or you can make Luigi a new and, uh, stuff. Luigi and Super Mario Brothers 64 or Super Mario exactly. 64. Right, right. And, so for that Sonic Super Edition, I just said, okay, what if the the rumors were true, but you know, to the nth degree, to the craziest degree possible, you know? And I kind of just so at that point, I was just having fun with every video. It's just uh, I make this one a different style. I have different kind of narrations. I'll reference things I referenced in earlier videos and just contradict it, just just for the point of it, you know? And it's a lot of fun. I put in a lot of my favorite. OC remixes in there. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> I didn't even know that. And it's it it I, I like it a lot. And I think I'll, I'll probably make a Sonic Three one sometime soon. Cool. Yeah. I, I have a lot. I have a lot. Uh, like the way a lot of times I make videos, I just kind of I don't. They don't actually just come out instantly. <laughs> I kind of just build up a lot of ideas for maybe a year or so. Mm -hmm. And then once I've had this all, I just okay. This is. This is as much as I can probably do on it. I can just, you know, release that like like this way, like my 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 Garfield video. Yeah. <laughs> that that one it was like I wrote those lyrics just over uh you know when I had nothing to do at some point, <sighs> and I thought those lyrics sat around, and then I saw something else in the video. And I said, oh, okay, I can use that. I can use this, and you know, I I I say I have kind of a a wiki mind. <sighs> Right. So I, you know, it, it's, it's not a good thing all the time, but, but like, I, I think of something and I think of, you know, I, I become obsessed with it and for pop culture. And I just, uh, I just have a, a lot of memory for pointless facts <laughs> that, that hint, hints how I could make that video with so many friends, actors in it, you know, <laughs> I, I did sit down and, you know, scrub through a lot of friends videos and wait for a sea of black face, you know. That's that's I, literally what I did. I, I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'll. I'll <laughs> but um, 
yeah. So so when I become, you know, I, I have this kind of these compulsions and I think about things a lot. So I can essentially what it boils down to is my videos are just kind of an advanced form of me, a, a release of my pattern recognition. <laughs> so all the, all, all my things I thought about Sonic 2 and, you know, I, I can just put them in here and say, OK, this is from this, this commercial, this weird Japanese thing, you know, I can put it all in here and just have that idea and just let that be that well yeah i think the funny thing of like seeing all that culture at once kind of it has the effect of just being like really disorienting yeah yeah um but i don't know i i like what i liked about the the let's play videos you did is you, it sort of treats it like almost as an art form or like this is this this like this idea that i'm playing a game is only a suggestion i can go <laughs> in my own territory and do whatever I want. And it's like, it's sad because I don't feel like I've seen people do that with let's plays at all. Like, uh, maybe outside of like one or two things, because I think like, I don't know, uh, the way that it works now is it's so instantaneous. Like everyone is making things very instantaneously. Um, and even when they're editing, like they're editing it because they want to do a review and those game reviews, like there's a lot of like cliches about thoughts, uh, people's thoughts about games or game history or whatever. Like I got, I kind of went down this wormhole recently. Like I watched like a lot of like uh, retro NES channels because I was really into retro, like I was a little too young for the NES, just like a little bit. So I yeah. caught the tail end of it. Um but I was obsessed with the NES, and me and my brother were, and so we collected them like back in the late '90s when it was easy to do that. Now it's like, <laughs> now it's like games are really expensive, and um, you know maybe it'll start to go back down at some point. But um, there's a lot of cliches that you hear repeated on these channels, like, oh, you know, this game is dated, or you know, blah blah blah, and that kind of stuff. And you know, I think some of the like ways that people are getting their information like angry video game nerd and stuff like that <laughs> is kind of like you know people s assume that sort of factual information that they yeah. you know that 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 have internalized that's that that's like the whole truth even when it isn't like it a lot of the the opinions and ideas that people have about games that were made by japanese companies kind of uh uh don't integrate in like actual knowledge of japanese culture <laughs> right i, I agree I, th I think there's something about you know quote unquote games culture that lends itself to a hard consensus even more than other media in general maybe like I, th I think there's something about games where a game if you like a game it's almost it's it's like the worst parts of sports fandom and religion <laughs> and like comic book and movie consumerism all like rolled into one you know yeah so a consensus forms it becomes very solidified in people's minds i remember in, in old video game magazines you know you know there's that weird thing throughout all magazines dude, everybody hates minecart levels you know <laughs> just weird things like that and then later on we you know the the runner genre takes off which is you know it's just minecart levels yeah so a million people love them <laughs> but you know it's just it, that that little the little bubble of people and maybe even back then they might have all been you know if they weren't all in the bay area or new york you know just published back when there were magazines <laughs> yeah but um yeah i definitely think that the, the, the youtube videos as well kind of have a style where there's not a lot of there's not a lot of room for people who just want to be curious or enjoy something, or just look at something normally, and say, it's always a performance. Mm -hmm. It's always, okay, I, I, this is the worst thing ever, I gotta, you know, I gotta curse and spit and, and fall over in my chair because this sprite looks wrong, you know? I was like, <laughs> <"Come on." laughs> Yeah, well, and I think the thing that bothers me... Uh, one of the things that bothers me about it is that it's like I, when I watch those videos, I'm like, oh, I'm really curious to hear what this person has to say. And then it, but it's like not what this person has to say at some level. It's it's like they're echoing some sort of consensus or canon or something like that that gets established around that. I, I mean, I have some background and context for. It. Like I understand that because I to some extent grew up reading video game magazines like what i was introduced to, like i read pc gamer more than i read some of the other ones but i was interested in console games 
it just like i never was like directly <clears throat> as like you know involved with that but like um and there is an element like uh of of curiosity i think that is definitely missing from these from like let's plays in general and from from these like the way that people talk about media of the past in this sort of really matter of fact way. Yeah, I, I agree. Like some of my favorite let's plays are like there is back a lot the old let's play <laughs> one of the old something awful was research indicates he did a, a he's a poster who created a, a series for Jurassic Park Trespasser. And it was really good. It was really in depth, really uh, detailed. He he, you know he. It's not a, it's not a great game consensus, but that wasn't his point. You know, mm. he was very interested in the mechanics, very interested in, in how it looked and everything like that. Very historically interesting. You know, uh, Frank Cifaldi has a good let's play, an annotation let's play uh, of gimmick. Yeah, I've watched that. Yes. I've watched that one. I think that one's very good. Uh, you know, just because his his depth of knowledge, depth and breadth. Um, Lee Alexander, she does those lo-fi Let's Plays. Mm -hmm. And she, you know, looks up old, uh, maybe Commodore 64 or Apple II games, and just kind of, they're they're more similar to my Sonic 1 video, let's put it that way. Yeah. They're, they're much more, in, in the sense that they're calm. Yeah. <laughs> in the sense that they're just, they're here, she just kind of, as an exploration, they say, well, what does this look like? What do I remember about this game? What is, well, you know? And it's stuff that, like, I mean, I've started to appreciate that stuff more like uh, old computer games, C64, Spectrum, DOS games, just because those aren't necessarily part of, like, the culture of what's popular out there right. these days. Like, it's console games, and it's it's specifically mostly Japanese console games, which is kind of weird for me to think about, because, like, in other aspects of culture, like, like film or whatever, like... Uh, that kind of stuff isn't considered part of the mainstream canon necessarily. Like, like people might be interested in J horror or something like that, but it's not considered part of the main critical canon. The main critical canon in like movies is mostly white European dudes and some Americans. Mm -hmm. But like in video games, it's sort of weirdly the opposite. It's like all these Japanese games and and all these white European dudes are like or like you know. Like Russian games or whatever, like aren't included in that. Uh, it's a, it's a weird flip, yeah. but like, it, but that knowledge. I feel like that knowledge of like uh, these games made by Japanese companies uh, is very limited in a lot of ways. <laughs> yeah, I mean their their corporate culture was so secretive. You might not even get the credit on somebody. You know, I, I mean, I, I'm I have my own searches. You know, I'm a obsessive person, so I want to know who made the original Burger Time, right? <laughs> and I got to go through this site and this site and look up old patent information, you know, <laughs> to even begin to get a clue yeah. on who does stuff like that, you know. And I think maybe something similar is happening, not from, let's say, a professional academic critical stance, but maybe something is happening now with with movies as in genre stuff, zombies and superheroes and stuff like that. Yeah. Where that's kind of taken up all the air. It, it is in starting the, in, in the same way that video games, you know, Japanese console games took up all the air in the 80s. Like, may, maybe in the future people will just look back on these and they'll, they'll see the nuances and they'll enjoy them in their own way. But, these, it's, you know, more independent movies, things like that won't give the same kind of breathing room, you know. Yeah, no, I do think genre movies are... Um are becoming like an increasing part of discussion. And there is that kind of like weird anti-intellectualism that accompanies that. Um, I guess there's like two, there's two sides of it. There's like, you know, there's that European art sensibility, which is extremely stuffy and like racist and sexist and a lot sure. of other things. But then there's, also like the the idea that you can whatever your vision doesn't matter what it is you can go out there and you can make it and you can realize your unique vision whereas on the other side it's like oh you know i like zombies so i should you know why can't i make something that is kind of goofy and fun and that's great but also a company's like oh you're not making it within this genre you're not trying to fit the rules or everything is like looked at in terms of genre and that's like very much where video games are at but it feels like also popular media a lot of it is is there too um like 
TV shows and and film especially. Yeah, I, I guess this this part of the stuff I put in my videos is like maybe I'll put in a clip of something, but it's just it has a weird little bit of humanity or a weird little bit of oddness into it. You know, an actor making a weird gesture, it's a weird dance, something that's that would not be part of a polished package in the modern era. And, and the, the fact that we have this, so much stuff like this now, part of the, the, that's kind of what's in our brain mainly is part of the thing my videos work because people see that it's like, this, this isn't even this little six second clip of something, you know, that's similar, I guess, to like everything is terrible or, yeah, you know, stuff like that. I'm a big fan just, of everything is terrible. Yeah. That's pretty great. <laughs> Found footage festival, stuff like that. Yeah. Where they'll, they'll they'll take you know they'll find old VHS stuff and extract it and sometimes in the, in the same way that I do you know without context just put it up there mm-hmm. and that little bit of creativity that little bit of you know interest that, that that'll be something it just kind of sparks you to life for a second you know yeah it's it's the same reason I put like an- samples of answering machine tapes in my music or things like that. <laughs> Because like there's a there's a whole extra story behind that that is that is now part of the music that you can't ignore you know um, I don't know I find that I find that interesting and like yeah uh, yeah I I um, where was I going with that oh, the thing I wanted to say about your friend's video is sort of a non sequitur is sure um, so I think in this day and age we expect like when we see something that's titled a certain way, you expect that information to come to you in a certain way and you expect it to have a certain perspective. And there's a lot of like uh, kind of more social justice oriented stuff that uh, has, has become popular on the internet um, sort of like clickbait kind of stuff. And, and so there's that expectation maybe that uh, certain, certain things will fit into that. But I saw like, so I saw like um in your semi alphabetical list of black actors with speaking roles and friends like <laughs> I saw somebody like that video got popular enough to be posted on like forums or somebody posted about it on a website or I, I don't remember exactly yeah, yeah. but someone was like oh see see there was actually a lot of black actors on friends and I was like I don't I don't think that was the point of the video <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, and other people were like, uh, well, they were all like waiters, though, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> or something else. And like, the thing is, like, there isn't necessary, like, in some ways, yes, there's a larger point that emerges from this, but that wasn't necessarily the immediate intention behind making the video. Like, sure. and like, I think people don't know what to do with that information. Like, they don't know what to do when they're presented with something that's like, this is factual you draw your own conclusions like i think it's funny and you and it it is obviously funny because like they are all like you know waiters or like weird parts like that but like yeah just side characters but like at the same time like i think people expect it to have like a, a an exact pinpointed point of view or something when mm-hmm. it's like uh, and and when and when there's something isn't like you sort of have to draw your own conclusions about it and be like okay yeah okay I see why this like all makes sense like um, <laughs> people are like confused about that yeah I, I definitely noticed after I posted that people people thought that I either I was you know I was defending friends I was insulting friends I was doing something else you know I, it, 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 it all came from the exact same information it's just I just I just wanted to make a silly rap. <laughs> you know, it's, and I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that as a cop out because some of you people, you know, comedians are like, oh, yeah, my stuff is on politics free. You know, that's 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 nonsense. Yeah. But, but in this situation, what I you know, it's not like I had some kind of I, I just thought of a lot of people at the same time. And I, it, I do think it's weird that, you know, they were representing New York in the 90s. And it's just, you know, it, it's so very white. But that's OK. It's, it's not like I don't like the show. <laughs> if I didn't like the show, I wouldn't sit down and know all all these pointlessly random facts about it to that <laughs> level. <laughs> it's it's not like there was back then there was like some kind of you know that, that's that's not information that you keep on a wiki. Wikis don't have a section that say black people. <laughs> you that's know? true. That's true. Yeah, because people who either people 
who are paying attention to that stuff either like are like oh this show is trash or people who are fans don't just completely ignore that stuff it's yeah it's weird to me like i think about that oh sorry go ahead uh, I was gonna say, I think I like a lot of my videos. I just I like to sing and I like to rap. I don't have any confidence to do that in any real way. <laughs> so this is just an outlet for me to kind of express myself that way. So <laughs> I'll, I'll say that. I don't know. It seems like I don't know, especially like the the wordplay and stuff. Like I just watched your like Doritos twenty second Doritos video and like <laughs> there's a lot of really nice like wordplay and stuff in that. So I wouldn't like you know. <laughs> I wouldn't talk down to yourself to, you know, be too modest about it. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like, I, uh, it's weird because, like, I see this, like, split on the internet, like, where it's either, like, and this is something that I've struggled with a lot. I think it's something that a lot of people are struggling with, but people don't talk about necessarily, is it's, like, either you're, like, hardcore, you're into, like, the social justice, you're into, like, you know, things being correct and, and stuff not being problematic and, like, that kind of stuff. And, like, you're you're looking at media through that way and you're, you're, you're applying the Bechdel be test. I can't fucking pronounce that. Bechdel test um, yeah. to, to media, which I always thought that that whole thing was a joke. But anyway, like, people are <laughs> applying it seriously, uh, like, all the time. And, yeah. um and and you're doing that stuff or you're like pure about enjoyment and you're like keep this social justice out of my shit man and like you know like you don't want anyone to like bring up that the sort of political aspects and you just want to enjoy something at the, at the level that it is and there's like it it almost seems like those two things have like totally split and there's no way that you can be in between and be like okay yeah maybe this is politically kind of messed up but you know i can also like look at this and say like hey you know i see what maybe i enjoyed about this or even if i didn't enjoy it like i see like there's another kind of hidden weird component to this that like just goes beyond me being upset about it because it did something shitty you know yeah i i think a lot of people now are just kind of yeah i, I agree with what you're saying the, the, there, there's a sort of people at this point are really obsessed with not caring <laughs> About anything like half people just do not want to care. If if you care, you've lost the game, <laughs> right? And then, like you said, uh, uh, the other half is is very you know it, the, the the media has to reach a certain potential just to or a, you know a, a, the, sort of a checklist way of watching things. Yeah. If, if if this is if it's bad in this way, then it doesn't really work. And yeah, I agree. I I, th I think you can when I watch something, I can you know I. I I don't blame people for not wanting to watch anything. Like, that's why do people, you know. So I, I never understand people who are like, you have to watch this thing. You you don't have to watch this thing, you know. If I mean, For my friends, fine, you know. But if it's just some stranger, you know, I, I, I don't understand. I, I think the part of my problem is that I, I do have taste in things, but I also feel like I can enjoy anything, really. Mm -hmm. I feel like as I'm watching something, part of the reason why I make these videos like this is that in my mind, I'm breaking it down into its component parts. <laughs> At least the first time I watch it, like maybe the second time I watch it, I'll actually enjoy it. But when I watch something, the first time I watch it, I'll just, you know, I'm saying, okay, I like this part, I like this piece, I like this piece. That's just really good, you know. Like I, the movie Pootie Tang, the Louis C.K. movie. Mm -hmm. God awful. <laughs> but <laughs> I watch it, and I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, I see what he was actually doing. I can see where studio interference happened here. <laughs> yeah. I can see how the actors wanted to do this choice or this happened and, oh, this is actually, you know, and, you know, it'll come on the side of good to me at that point, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. This is, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a sticky wicket, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, yeah, I've been, I've been struggling because I, I think it's like, um, if you are, uh, if you're part of a group, like, if you're not white or you're like uh, trans or whatever, like you're part of a group that gets made fun of a lot in comedy or like treated poorly in terms of like depictions in media yeah. historically, you kind of like at that's at one level that's fucked up and that needs to change. Yes. But at another level, like 
Um, so, so I totally understand people getting mad about that and people, you know, raising a fuss about it. And I'm, I'm behind it at some level. But then on the other hand, like, I think once you're so used to, see, like, you get used to seeing microaggressions happen against, like, people like you all the time as just, like, because, like, that's the way that the world is. And so you kind of have to find a way, even though it kind of sucks, like, it does reflect the world that we live in, that those things are depicted that way. So you kind of have to find another way to understand it that goes just beyond feeling upset or angry about it, I think. Yeah, I mean, at a certain point, it's you have to live in the world. Yeah. With, with people, I mean... I, I live in the I live I live in the South. I live in Trump country, right? Mm-hmm. And at a certain point, you're gonna have to if you if you're going to function in the world, you have to get along with people who have either terrible opinions or have already judged you in their mind before they've met you. Yeah. Right. And it 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 fucking sucks. But it, it, when you try to, it, it, it's 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 two pronged, right? People who uh, kind of go for a checklist thing about, I don't want this, I don't want this, I don't want this in my media. And when, when part of it just reflecting reality or when part of it is just, you know, maybe they're not trying to show good hearted people, responsible people, you know, socially aware people it, to make, maybe that's not the funniest thing or maybe that's not the scariest thing or whatever the effect this thing is going for, you know? maybe there is a purpose to this art beyond modeling behavior to you. And on the other hand, there's people who just, you know, everything is okay. Yeah. I don't care. You know, the, the whole, like if that's kind of the, the, that's kind of the something awful position (laughs) oftentimes, not all the time. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Sure. And, 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 you know, it, Places like that, it's like something awful, especially or like Reddit. Let's say mm-hmm. people can really get into. Okay, I I just read this one little part of it, this little sliver, so I don't even recognize the huge problems with the rest of it over here. You know, and the, 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 yeah, but like you said, it, it gets people who just kind of don't care. That kind of weird, like South Park. I guess if you care, you lose. Essentially, yeah. If you have if you have an opinion about anything one way or the other, you lose. When I think, you know, something like South Park, like, this this sounds weird, but I genuinely don't think that we would have as much anti-Semitism today if there wasn't as much, like, wacky, you know, goofy, uh, quote-unquote ironic anti-Semitism on South Park. Yeah, definitely. If, if, if they weren't, you know, everything doesn't have to model behavior, but, you know. Well, I saw, I, I definitely saw that directly with, uh, when I came out as trans, like, on a forum, someone was like, Oh, you know, I wish I was a dolphin, too. And I was like, yes, I have seen that episode of South Park. Congratulations, you you watched an episode of South Park. Yeah. And you just repeated it. And then, like, like there was that video of the kid, like, freaking out because uh, he got bullied for being a ginger because there was a South Park episode about gingers that was, like, I, I don't know, Cartman was, like, bullying gingers or something. So he's, like, mm-hmm. really mad about it. So he made a video about it. And then that video got in South Park. And then, like, uh, and they made fun of that. And then, like, I, like, watched, like, later videos of him, and he was just, like, saying how none of his friends would hang out with him because they were, like, you're an embarrassment and, like, all this other stuff. And I'm, like, wow. Re- <laughs> Is this really, like, like making, like, a, a you know, 14-year-old kid feel shitty? Like, is that, is that, what, is that what you're about? <laughs> Like, the South Park guys have made some of my favorite stuff, some of my favorite comedy. I think they're, they're really smart, and they can make really funny stuff. But it, some of it is just shit, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Some of it is harmful. And to, either, to pretend like nothing matters, it's just, you know, it's nonsense. Yeah. I don't know. Like, the... Um... What was I going to say? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I sort of had a reaction... Uh where some of my favorite media, um, like one of my favorite movies, for example, is the movie Showgirls. Um, mm-hmm. And like for a long time, like, I mean, if you look at that movie on the, the fa- on its face, like it was written by Joe Esterhaus, who's like pretty clearly a misogynist. And like you, uh, 
you know, you look at what's in the movie and, you know, the way that it treats people in the movie who are, fem you know, women, like, yeah, uh, it's, it's shitty and, you know, some of the acting and the way that people talk in the movie. But then if you actually, like, think about it, oh, no, this movie is actually, like, really intelligent in the way that it deals with a bunch of different issues. But it's, yeah. it's, it's not directly depicted. You sort of have to draw those conclusions. Like, you have to draw the conclusions that, for example, the the best character in the movie is her friend who's a black woman who gets fucked over the most in the movie and is is the one who helps her out the most like um and or or that there's like a lot of like uh lesbian shit in that movie that is like you know anyway like the point yeah, is yeah. the point is like there are all these like uh degrees of like uh things that are going on in this like in this depiction of of shitty like in the ways that our culture are shitty like there are all this other there's all this other stuff going on and i don't think that people know oftentimes know how to like look at media that way in a way that like yeah you know and i i don't know if that's just like a you know, I, I maybe it's just a cultural thing. Like we either view something as being all inherently political and don't really look at the artistic or like more kind of uh, hazy aspects of it, or we just look at something as pure enjoyment and don't want to even think about the political aspects of it. Like I don't know, maybe that's a cultural literacy or something. But like, yeah, I don't know. It's it's frustrating to me. <laughs> I think there's something to that. Like, there, there's a lot of, you know, Paul Verhoeven or or uh, John Waters or, or even, like, a TV show like Married with Children, right? There's, there's like, there's a little bit, there's a, there's a kind of sharp bit of reality kind of just stabbed in you for a second that you don't get from it's a more polished, let's say, middle class kind of thing. And even stuff that has, you know, like, I... I uh, I don't even know how to say it. <laughs> I, I could not care less about the word problematic. Mm. <laughs> it's just that's that's why I made a game called Problematic. Yeah, exactly. It, it was actually it was actually a joke on the fact that everyone calls everything problematic. I just realized who I was talking to. I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think people. But, uh, was, I don't think a lot of people got that I was like making fun of that. Yeah. At some level, but to me, just if you if you think something sucks about something, just say that it fucking sucks. Yeah. Just say, oh yeah, this part is super racist. I hate it. You don't don't you don't have to say, oh you know, this is kind of it's, it's got issues. This this is this, you know I don't know. I think problematic makes you say saying something. It's like more of an academic term, so it makes you sound a little bit more like uh, intelligent if you say that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know, like, um, gosh. I, I definitely have elements in my videos that are, you know, problematic. Yeah. That aren't, that aren't nice. They're, they're, they're gross or weird or mean. Yeah. It's not, my, my stuff is not all just, you know, a fun dance party. <laughs> a, a lot of my stuff has, you know, just, you know, and that's, that's, that's part of me. That's part of where it came from. That that is also like, I don't know. Uh, I mean, part of the reason why this uh, podcast is called Beyond the Filter is that it feels like uh, the internet encourages like you personally kind of curate everything that you enjoy based on this very specific set of criteria, and that's the way that like a lot of technology and a lot of like social media and different you know YouTube and all the way aggregators and things like that. Mm -hmm. defines the way that we experience the internet so and and like therefore culture because we spend so much time on there and so the idea of like i don't want to be exposed to like you know trump supporters or whatever you know yeah. um it, it's creating this weird division where there are all these like hidden realities beyond like what this filter is showing us and i think that that is doubled down by the fact that everyone is on the internet because they're, 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 we're having now the conversation space is not like this is, oh, this is the internet for 30 year olds, you know? Mm -hmm. This is the internet for people in their 20s. No. People who are 13, you know, people who are younger are having the same conversation with people who are 55, you know? Mm -hmm. 
there, there's no difference anymore. So everything comes flattened out. So no matter how young you are, people are like, oh, yeah, you should already know this. Why don't you know this already? You know, mm -hmm. there's there's no room for people to just kind of grow or be themselves. They're kind of just kind of shunted into this flattened Internet adulthood. Yeah. I mean, I think like definitely mainstream cultural stuff has infiltrated into the Internet and become, you know, a large thing. It it. It makes me think of like, you know, like all your base are belong to us or something like that. Like, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not like trying to like reminisce about the good old days or something. Cause I, you know, at the same <laughs> level, like a lot of those communities were really toxic and like really, uh, encouraged, um, we're, we're like, you know, mostly white men who were in the communities. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, like, you know, it's not like saying that, that 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 was good at any level but um but that kind of like meme or whatever so specialized um it, it kind of represents the internet being about something different and uh i feel like that gradually disappearing or at least kind of going underneath the like it's sort of i don't know it's kind of hiding underneath like at this point you know what? I, I there is there is a Hallmark movie, <laughs> one of those family movies, about a black kid who wants to be a game designer, <laughs> and <laughs> this this is just a few years ago, and these kids they they're all going to this special school or something for game design, a big contest, and it's it's hilarious. It's all you know the media represents video games is the most crazy, bizarre, foreign thing, and it, I think it's a lot of fun. And in, and in that movie, these two kids who are teenagers in, let's say, the year 2011, are like, hey, man, all your baser belong to us. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, this is just a family movie. And it's like, just some, some person on staff remembered that or some, you know, it all just gets filtered down into just the strangest places. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, they're, at some, in some level, like, a lot of people get mad about that stuff, and, like, they're losing that culture and all that kind of stuff, and at some level, like, I guess there's parts of that anger that is justified, but then at another level, it, it's kind of interesting to me, like, I was really, I, I know that the reason they made a Ghostbusters movie with all women was because of things that happened in the past several years online, and, like, like, sort of issues like feminism getting more play and like i actually really enjoyed that movie i mean right. for what it was um mm -hmm. and yeah it's like this sort of weird neoliberal feminism whatever activism at some level but at another level like yeah i don't know like i think we should be criticizing and enjoying things at the same time like yeah exactly <laughs> Like one a, a game that I like to play a lot, or that I still like at some level, is Duke Nukem 3D, and that game is so stupid in terms of like its misogyny and like other stuff. But then there's all this mm -hmm. other weird stuff in the game, and like I, you kind of can't. I don't know. Like I like to look at it where I can say both sides are are valid, and you know, both things are important. And yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I'm I'm kind of interested to see how like they're actually the speaking of Paul Verhoeven there's like a new movie that he made uh, that was at con which was uh, basically it's about a woman who gets she gets raped at the beginning of the movie and it's basically about her dealing with that and processing that and she works for a game design company. Uh, she's like in charge of a game design company who makes characters with like huge anime boobs and she's like telling them to make their anime boobs bigger and stuff like that and, and like I'm like really fascinated by this like the fact that this culture has kind of infiltrated in a weird way and I'm uh, also actually kind of like curious to see that the way that this is like kind of permeates into larger culture to be honest I don't yeah, know. me too. I mean, it, people get really upset with when um, you know, quote unquote, nerd stuff, or when when they've when, when you're a lonely kid and you have to base what little identity you can form out of the things you consume. It 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 kind of sticks with you for your whole life. Mm 
Mm-hmm. So you're like, man, that, that's not Superman, you know, that's not, <laughs> that's not Batman, you know. And the, the, this, these prescribed things are the right ones. And, it's, and, we're, and we're, everybody's just holding on to these decrepit old franchises from the 1930s. <laughs> and and they've, they've become myths in a way that they, people, you know, used to just say, oh, yeah, comic books are modern myths. And it, but at this point, they are sort of a religion in and of themselves. Yeah. All these varied interpretations and well, what does this character really mean? What, what is it? What is their? What are their morals and why should I be watching their story? And I, I think that we people need a, a better outlets, really, just in general. People people need there need to be better and more creative tools. Yeah. For people to to build things for easier, for you know, you you can't just tell somebody, oh yeah, just. Just dive into Unity. It's real, you know. Just <laughs> yeah. Just I mean, dive in. I know a lot of people who have done that, and they don't realize that, like, actually, you know, it's not that easy. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm I, I'm pretty good with, let's say, the the game making program, Click Team Fusion, right? <laughs> and and that is from my lifetime of cruft in my brain built up from the click and play days, right? Yeah. yeah I wouldn't. It's not something I would recommend to somebody. Oh, this is it. You're a new person. Just hop right in. You know. There's mm. so stuff like like Mario Maker is good, yeah. But that's still it's still within a one singular corporate entity in this one platform with this set of non-creative tools. But if somebody could make something like that for games, just you know a platformer maker, even that would be something. You know stuff like Twine, which is not it's not super hard. Yeah. Well, the, the weird irony about Mario Maker versus ROM hacks is, like, ROM hacks will have more longevity. Like, it's more, more people can play ROM hacks, like, in the future. In the future, like, I don't know, Nintendo might take down their servers, and how will you play any of these games, and, or any of these levels that people made anymore? Yeah. And meanwhile, like, these ROM hacks will still probably be online for people to play, and anyone can play them on their computer, like... I mean, it's not quite as easy, but like, it's the weird, the weird like thing thinking about like how the official like, uh, you know, something that is officially pr- uh, approved like has is has less, much less longevity. Let, let me tell you something. Right now, as we speak, <laughs> there's a there's a program that Microsoft made called Project Spark which was sort of a 3D game design tool that, you know, mm-hmm. it's it's similar to Mario Maker. People had uploaded levels. You can look some of them up on YouTube. You know, people are like, oh, yeah, let, me, let me make Sonic, let me make Mario, let me make this in there, that, you know. It, it's more robust than Mario Maker, and it's a full kind of 3D tool. And right now, you cannot pay for the program. You can't download it for free. You can't use it. And the user levels are about to get all get taken down in the next few weeks here. Wow. So... Unless somebody goes ahead and, you know, tries to find a way to save all this information within literally the next few weeks here, a sort of micro-culture will be lost. Yep. And that, that, that's exactly what, what probably will happen with Mario Maker in, you know, five years, ten years, who knows, but, you know. Well, and that's the thing with like online communities is there. There's so much, or and and microcultures is there's so. There's like it's really dependent on someone being there to be like this is important. I am going to preserve this. Like, and it's not going to be a corporate entity. It's not going to be government or whatever that does this because they have no interest in it. It's going to be somebody who lives in fucking Iowa or whatever, like, you know, like, and who, like, yeah. commits their life. Like, like it's, it was, I mean, I've said this about, like, Wolfenstein 3D. Like, I discovered Wolfenstein 3D modding. It's not a very big scene compared to, like, Doom modding or whatever. Um, yeah. And I discovered it through this guy, Mr. Lowe's Wolf 3D page. This guy literally, like, uploaded every Wolfenstein 3D mod that he was ever sent or he could find. He put it on this page it's still up there. It still like looks the same way, and he's like literally committed a lot of his life to preserving that. And you know, I don't know what'll happen when it goes down. Hopefully, somebody else preserves it. But like that, all that stuff is still there because one person did that. You know? Yeah, that, that's kind of where we are. Little little tiny things, uh, ZZT, or 
Um, what was I thinking of? So there's a, there's an old Microsoft program called 3D Movie Maker. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's a lot of movies are made for it. This is, and this is almost pre-internet. It's right, like, 95, 96. Yeah. So pe- people were just starting to share stuff with that. And there's still a community of people who make it and save movies from it. But, you know, this is just, or little, little TI-80 calculator games. Yep. People save those, you know. That was, like, and a huge part of culture in my school, is the, are those games. Yeah, exactly. And and there's so much, so many things like that where just creative communities are kind of just limited to what they can save or who wanted to save. You know, you probably just downloaded the things that you liked. You probably weren't trying to be an archaeologist. <laughs> yeah. You know? But, you know. Now, that's the, like, um, like I know Frank Cifaldi talks a lot about game preservation, but I, I guess mm-hmm. my, pe- my pet peeve, and I hear people talking about, my pet peeve of that is, like, he only talks about console games. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. And like um uh, like I don't know, like he's he did a he did a talk at um GDC that I thought was really good about emulation and how emulation is important and how mm-hmm. it preserves a lot of things. Like you go and download the oops, you go and download the entire ROM set of NES ROMs and you can find all these weird pirate things like weird ROM hacks and stuff like that and yeah so so many people who probably downloaded this whole ROM set have that on their computers and or they've you know so many people have freaking color a dinosaur or some like really random obscure NES game on their computers <laughs> but how many of those people like yeah. uh like but then at the same time people are way less interested in preserving like random indie games that somebody made on some program that's like you know sure. even like ten years ago a lot of these games don't exist anymore like you know there's a pretty good chunk of games that you cannot play anymore that are less than ten years old and and they're not like and and it's weird it's just weird how there's that kind of like interest in things that are Nintendo or specific eras of culture and maybe it's just that people who grew up with like early indie games or something need to get older so that they they could try to preserve <laughs> the stuff that's out there or whatever but it's yeah. just weird how selective that kind of uh that kind of knowledge around that stuff is um, yeah like we we people are worried about you know flash games and we still we we still got to worry about tape trading games on old ZX Spectrum stuff you know yeah <laughs> there's, there's 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 always there's always more and there's always I, I I love those kind of worlds. I just love I love the mystery of just the obscure media, and that's that's part of why I make the stuff I make. Yeah, I, like some some of my Sonic stuff is literally me hacking the ROM. <laughs> so what I'll do a certain thing, you know, and I I I, I really like just I, I recently stumbled upon this bizarre wiki of of Fraser fan fiction. <laughs> Somebody had written uh, uh, seven different Frasier spinoffs comprised of like 105 different seasons. Wow. And it's nothing but episode fictional episode synopsis. Just paid. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's just a tome. <laughs> and I love it. I, 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 I really, people, a lot of people have this reaction to fan fiction or fan art where they just want to make fun of it. But I, yeah. I am just, I love the scope of it i love uh weird indie published amazon books yeah just i i I, the freedom that the tools we have today they're not great but for let's say music and text (laughs) they're pretty good Mm -hmm. for people who want to just make something real quick and there's there's just so much of it out there that you know yeah I don't know. That's that's a fear of mine like with people increasingly being on smartphones and iPads and things like that of like there's less you have less ability to like do creative things in those in those like there are apps and things that you can use that you can be creative in but they're much more limited than, you know, designated programs for a computer where you can go in and change all these things and like mm-hmm. and it's much more corporately controlled especially like like with smartphones um i mean it depends on what smartphone but still like that experience is 
so defined in a specific way and that that like that influence of um sort of the business side of tech culture is becoming so apparent on the way that we experience the internet and like i mean i think that there's too much maybe too much of a background in this more anarchistic like uh make what you want you know whatever for that to completely ever go away but that it has gone a lot more underground and um i don't know it, it's uh maybe maybe i don't know like i i don't know what to to think about that because at the same time like you know youtube has become mainstream and youtubers are have become popular but and and that's something that is like that the media isn't it isn't or ostensibly controlled by the same few outlets but then in the same way it's now controlled by tech companies or you know the yeah. the, the way that you experience things so i guess it's trading one thing for another but like i don't know i just i guess i have a lot of fear about that kind of approach um disappearing and the ability to go in and like you know text edit and make your own website or the ability to like you know i, I don't know like share things and make things in the way that you want to make them. Um, yep. I, and you know, I, I've had stuff taken off of YouTube, stuff taken off of SoundCloud, stuff taken off of Vimeo, stuff taken off of Tumblr. You know, you just, you, it's, it's a shell game you're playing half the time. Yeah. With stuff that you make and it would be it copyright or just, they don't want it for whatever reason, you know, you're limited by whatever, you know, and and it's not like people – we don't live in the age of web rings or <laughs> just people posting their own websites, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's all through Facebook. It's all through Twitter. This is where you get everything. It, oh, here's a list that BuzzFeed made, you know. This is, this is the final word on this specific weird thing. Yeah. Well, it's I've noticed that with like my blog, like I wrote a post to my blog and less people are going to read it, even though my blog was relatively popular just because it's on somebody's blog. Mm -hmm. It's not on like a particular website. And and I see that with like political articles. There are things that are super in-depth or interesting, but because they're on a website no one heard of, people aren't going to click on it. And that's like that's yeah. what happens with YouTube. It's like you know, you make your own video, like, let's say you're worried about copyright stuff, so it's like, oh, I'd rather upload this to a specific server or something like that. No one's going to watch it then. Um, I mean, some people yeah. might watch it, but no one's going to watch it unless you put it on YouTube, but then if you put it on YouTube, you risk it being taken down. And there, there, there are some initiatives people have to try to make this these independent tools that are like people, oh yeah, this is just kind of a a non corporate sharing thing. You know, this is this is not for a profit. But it, it never really works out that way. We were kind of already locked in right now at this point. Yeah. I guess like hopefully in the future, and I can't predict the future, obviously, but hopefully um there will be people who will find a way to um like what I, what I want, what my like idealized vision is people being able to create something that is more user like modifiable. Like you can, there's more ways in which you can sort of modify your experience in a way that's artistic, not in a way that's like, Oh, customize what you want to see on your video feed or whatever. Um, but do you know what though? Even with all the problems with this corporate internet, what really excites me is that, and even though people are all kind of in the same space, they're still really not. Yeah. Like, there is so much done. There's an entire world behind Snapchat and Vine. That's true. And Tumblrs that are just, would be completely alien to me. Mm-hmm. And I would never even go there in the first place to look for them, you know? Yeah. Well, I guess that's good and bad in a way, because I, I, I feel sad that those things can't, like, get an audience outside of their community. But then at the same time, maybe it's good that some things don't ever get super big. <laughs> yeah, you can't have it both ways. You can't have it not curated and curated, I guess, you know? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just, like, uh, I want like creativity to be more of a part of the experience of the internet now 
because it used to be in the past. Yeah. It'd be nice. We could, if we get, you know, stuff, the old days, you would just, you would go to a website and you would not even know what to expect. It might be a flash site. It might be weird JavaScript you've never seen. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't, it wasn't just this kind of sanded down, nice looking Squarespace site or whatever, you know? Yeah. It was just something wild or weird. And that's, that's, that's kind of nice. I, I am nostalgic for that. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess that's the the way that maybe people can still have an impact on culture in the internet is um, is to try and create your own spaces and your own sort of communities or your own ideas that aren't just trying to uh, echo mainstream or other consensus. Because I f- I feel like that's my biggest issue is um, you know like those let's plays or those reviews that kind of echo the same consensus or like media that kind of echoes the same consensus, like something that is more kind of in its own territory, using its own language, combining things in its own way and, and, and unapologetically doing that and existing in the same space as some of this other stuff. And I guess that's what I hope for. And I hope to encourage more people to do that kind of stuff rather than trying to speak to the mainstream that is probably not going to listen to you. <laughs> yeah. I, I still like that, you know, if you watch Adult Swim at four in the morning, you're going to, you literally will see an experimental film, you know? <laughs> yeah. You'll, you'll see something that's just, uh, you know, that, that is not the least, it's, it still has to go through its own filters. It still has to go through a corporate, you know, media, but there's still some humanity sprouting up under there, you know? Mm-hmm. Something you can really see. Yeah, that's true. Well, so is there anything else you wanted to talk about before we go? Hmm. Can't really think of anything. Okay. Well, it's... I, I... Go, go ahead. <laughs> I, I just, I, I really, I, I like what I do a lot, and I'm really grateful that people have... It, that it, somehow I have connected with the people out there, no matter how weird it is, it makes you feel alive, you know. <laughs> it's it's all really weird at some level. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've been. This has been beyond the filter. I've been talking to Topher Florence, aka Doc Future. His YouTube channel is Doc Future One. You have other videos out there in mysterious corners of the internet, like the that Doug thing. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Look, look up look up the uh, YouTube channel Helter Skeeter. Helter Skeeter. That's what <laughs> it is. There's a lot of stuff on there. Yeah, I, I like I like that one. All the all the different covers of Helter Skelter combined with <laughs> with Doug. <laughs> Um, and Sonic 2 Special Edition, which you can uh, probably Google. It's on the Let's Play archive. Yeah, I'd recommend watching that version. The one on YouTube is not really complete because of copyright. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of your videos. It's been great to have you on. I feel like this has been a good conversation. Hopefully, we can talk some other some you know some time later. But yeah. yeah sure. Um, okay. Cool. Well, thank you for 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 coming on. <laughs> Thanks, Liz. It was a pleasure. <laughs> cool. Well, I will see you guys on the next podcast.